Hello everyone, this is Teach Me Channel and I'm Sarah. In today's video, we will continue talking about hypertension treatment, but this time we will talk about medication that can work on the long-term response, the RAS system. If you can remember this diagram from the video of blood pressure regulation, we said that the kidney can feel low blood pressure and will respond by releasing renin, and renin will be converted to angiotensin that can raise the blood pressure. So let's imagine that this patient is already having a high blood pressure and we want to lower it. Then it makes sense that if I blocked any of these steps, I can lower the blood pressure. In this video, we will talk about the RAS medications, thiazide as one of the diuretics, and direct vasodilators. RAS inhibitors. We will talk about the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors or ACE inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers, ARBs. Examples of ACE inhibitor captopril, enalopril, and nizilopril, they end with pril. And for ARBs, valsartan, candesartan, and losartan, they end with sartan. So let's bring the diagram I showed you in the beginning. ACE inhibitor means inhibiting the angiotensin converting enzyme. So we're not converting angiotensin 1 to 2, as well as we're not inactivating pradecanin. So pradecanin will be active, causing vasodilation. Keep this in mind because we will talk about this side effect. For ARBs, it will bind on the receptor of angiotensin found in the vessels, so it will cause vasodilation. ACE inhibitor and ARBs are recommended for someone with chronic kidney disease and diabetes plus albuminuria because it improves the GFR. Now for the side effects. ACE inhibitor can cause hypotension, dizziness, palpitations, and headache. ARBs can cause orthostatic hypotension or dizziness. ACE inhibitors will not cause the release of aldosterone, that's why the patient can present with hyperkalemia. They can also have acute renal failure in someone with bilateral renal artery stenosis. So, keep in watching their renal function as well as electrolytes. We talked about predicaments and the cause of vasodilation, especially with ACE inhibitors. That's why they can have angioedema and dry cough, which is less markedly seen in someone with ARBs. And angioedema is a life-threatening condition. Once you see it, you should switch the patient to ARBs or other medications. Both ACE inhibitors and ARBs are teratogenic, so never prescribe it for a pregnant lady. Thiazide as one of the diuretics. An example is hydrochlorothiazide. It works by preventing the reabsorption of sodium and chloride from the distal convoluted tubule. So when you lose sodium chloride and water, it means that you're lowering the blood pressure. It also keeps in losing potassium and hydrogen. It is a good option for African-American as well as elderly patients. Side effects. We said that they will lose sodium, potassium, as well as magnesium. That is why you should keep in monitoring their electrolytes. On the other hand, they will increase the level of calcium, urea, lipid, and glucose. So in someone with gout, hyperuricemia will just worsen their case. In someone with diabetes, you don't want them to have hyperglycemia. So you should consider whether giving thiazide for these patients or not. Direct vasodilators. It means they work on the vein or artery directly to vasodilate them by either increasing the nitric oxide, like in sodium nitroprusside, hydralazine, or organic nitrates, or by decreasing the availability of calcium, like calcium channel blocker. And when you don't have calcium, it means the smooth muscle around the vessel will not constrict or causing smooth muscle hyperpolarization by the opening of potassium channel, like minoxidil or diazoxide. They all can cause arterial vasodilation, but also venous vasodilation in case of sodium nitroprusside and organic nitrates, and they are all color-coded. So let's start with the sodium nitroprusside. This can be used in hypertensive emergency in the ICU because it has a short half-life from 1 to 10 minutes, easily titered and monitored. What do I mean by hypertensive emergency? When the blood pressure is more than 180 over 110 with the presence of end organ damage. So sodium nitroprusside will be converted to nitric oxide and cyanide, and we know that cyanide is toxic, but the mitochondria can handle it and convert it to thiocyanate, which is less toxic. But the patient will have thiocyanide poisoning if he has renal failure. For hydralazine, one of the important side effects is drug-induced lupus. Next is calcium channel blockers. We have two families, but the family that we're interested in is the dihydroperidines because it directly vasodilate the vessels, like amlodipine and nifedipine. Side effects. One of the important side effects is edema. Others like palpitation and constipation. 
Next, minoxidil. Minoxidil will be used in case of uncontrolled blood pressure after a maximum hydralazine dose because it's more potent. One of the side effects is higher trichosis, which means growth of hair. And actually, people nowadays are using it to grow hair. Lastly, diazoxide. This is used in case of hypertensive emergency, and it can also reduce the insulin release. Sometimes people consider taking it if they have hypoglycemia secondary to insulinoma. And here's a summary from TeachMed channel for hypertension treatment. Thank you.